I do debate a lot. I, um, I guess I kind of, like I said, I fall short on the, on the Bible side of things. And um, right now I'm really busy with school, so as much as I want to read some books on, like, archaeological finds with the Bible and everything, I just don't really have time right now. So I guess I kind of wanted to get your point of view, having actually read the Bible and, and knowing as much as you do. Do you know more about, say, like, its origins and such that kind of discredit it? You don't have to spend a lot of time um, becoming an expert in all things Bible, because first of all, Christianity and Judaism aren't the only two religions out there. Uh, right. It's like you know, right now we're seeing a rash of of Muslims point, you know, pointing to the Quran, saying the Quran has revealed all these great things way before men ever discovered it. And the fact of the matter is, uh, it's wrong. It's hogwash. They're reinterpreting passages. What you don't, so you don't have to become an expert in any of them. The thing to remember is that anybody who's making a claim and using an argument from the Bible or an argument from the Quran, they have the burden of proof. They need to establish that um, the book is a reliable source that somebody should accept as true. Now, I'm not even sure how anybody could begin to do that because every attempt that I've seen that tries, and including the attempts that I tried myself as a believer, um, they fail, and they fail easily. Uh, because, you know, in the case of the Bible, for the most part, we have no original cop. Well, we don't have any original um, manuscripts. Uh, we also don't uh, know who wrote a great chunk of it. Um, it makes outrageous claims um, that there's no supporting evidence for. Many of the things that are in the Bible have exist nowhere else. There's not in, like there's historical confirmation for even the existence of Jesus, let alone the, you know, the things he supposedly did. Um, right. Some passages are added. Yeah, there are passages that are added. You don't even have to go outside the Bible to find warnings. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Like you know, Paul's, Paul basically goes to great effort to say, I'm writing this in my own handwriting so that you know that it wasn't forged. Basically letting <laughs> us know that the forgeries were prevalent. And from the variety of manuscripts that we have and the differences, um, we know that there were forgeries going on. The Joanne and Kamina, um that, that reinterprets um, the, to, to invent the Trinity. Um, those types of things are in there. Um, is it Mark 16, 9 through 20, the very end right. of the book of Mark, is, is all, uh, doesn't exist in the oldest manuscripts. Yeah. But even if all the manuscripts were good and reliable and the same, and we had them back to the originals, that still tells us nothing about whether or not they're true. For example, if, if the Bible had revealed something profound and scientific, um, it still wouldn't be justified, you still wouldn't be justified to believe it because the Bible said it. That's an argument for authority. Once we, would, we, once we would have confirmed through reasonable scientific methods um, the truth of the statement, then it might have an impact on, aha, here's some revelation um, that people had long before they could have had access to knowledge, and that might be relevant. But the problem is in, the, in those old books, you don't see anything like that. You don't see anything that's specific. What you see are passages that people interpret after right. science has discovered something and said, oh, yes, well, of course the Bible said this. Well, the problem is, is that once upon a time, people would say that the Bible claimed that the earth was the center of the universe or that it was flat on four pillars, hung motionless in the sky with a firmament <laughs> that you couldn't penetrate. And yet, as science discovered the truth, these people went back and did a little revision in their interpretation, found a different passage, and said, see this passage here says the earth is circular. We had a guy call in, I think it was last week, uh, saying how do you deal with this, you know, this profound knowledge in the Bible that the earth is circular. Well, it's yeah. easy. Yeah. It's not circular. It's a sphere. Circles are flat. Um, the, idea, actually... the idea that it shouldn't even be that hard. The, you know, the idea that it's somewhat circular is easy. I mean, somebody, somebody wrote in and, and reminded me that we should have just said right off the bat, <laughs> if you stand up on top of a mountain, you look around in a circle and you see a okay. fairly continuous horizon. It makes sense that ancient people with no other knowledge might come up with the idea that the earth is a circle. You don't need to know anything at all about the Bible um, because when people make the arguments from the Bible, th the response is, 
why are you accepting the Bible as a true authority? They have to establish that there's good reason to do that. Um, and if anybody can, that, that would be interesting and I'd like to know about it. Because so far, even with the best quote-unquote apologists, um, I haven't seen anything that even comes close. And right. were we to, like I said, were we to find something, it would still need to be verified by the methods that we deem reasonable for analyzing evidence and making good decisions. Um, the fact that some book said something, it doesn't mean any more, anything more to me that the, the Bible happens to say X is a sin or X is true than war and peace might say something. Actually, um, something I do want to ask, because you just said it a minute ago, you know, the earth obviously isn't fat. Does right. that actually, like, so he, no, it doesn't say that in there. Does it, does it say that in there somewhere? I mean, specifically? I know it mentions the four corners of the earth on two, in two separate passages. Okay, what we're talking about a little bit is, is biblical interpretation. And um, I try to be as fair and reasonable about this as possible. You can t interpret the Bible to say almost anything you want. Right. Um, but what I look for is when somebody's giving me an interpretation of a passage, the more close to literal it is, the more likely I, I am to think that their view of what the author meant is correct. It's not always the case because you have poetry and metaphor, etc. But when right. you say that somebody could stand on top of a mountain or that there was a tree growing on top of a mountain that could be seen from the entire earth, you are describing a small, flat earth. There is no other option. There is no place on the planet earth that you could put any tree of any size that it could be seen from the whole of the earth. Matter okay. of fact, there isn't a spot in Austin where you could put a tree that you could see it from the whole of Austin. So they're describing a very tiny, flat, um, world, and that's that's the way their viewpoint was. Right, and if God was really all knowing, <laughs> yeah, this awkward word of His wouldn't be so fallible like this. I, I would tend to agree. So, um, I guess what I was getting at was I, I did start reading a book. I believe it's called The Bible on Earth or something like that. And I mean, my understanding is that Finkelstein. Is, I'm sorry, what's that? Is that Finkelstein? It's biblical archaeology. Yes. Yeah, I've got it. I, I haven't finished it, but I, I was reading some stuff in there. They're, they're going through and kind of showing what, what, what archaeology, what real science does uh, agree with about the Bible and doesn't agree with with regard to um, the, the Jewish time imprisoned by um, the Egyptians, which basically we're starting to figure out there's no reason to think it ever happened. Right. Yeah, because it mentions things like herds of camels back when they're clearly they weren't domesticated yet, and just random things like that. I guess I just wanted to get your take how many of those types of things you knew if you've read this book. And I haven't finished the book, but so far from what I, I've read, um, I, they seem to be right on the mark, um, and at least at least they're backed with good science and reason, and they're not making they're making claims that um, that. They don't go outright to say that this is all uh, false or made up. Uh, the, their, their larger point seems to be that um, we can't, through archaeology, confirm this. As a matter of fact, the archaeological evidence leads us to think that things like this never happened. But that doesn't change the fact that, that what we're talking about is uh, Jewish history, true or false, that has had an effect on the Jewish people. So they're, they're a little more forgiving, I guess, um, than I would be yeah. about discovering that archaeology doesn't support their myths. Um, but they're, they're not pulling any punches when, when the evidence uh, isn't there to support it or, or when the evidence contradicts it, they say so. And so far, it's been a really good book. Okay, yeah. I, I'm taking summer classes. I'm still in school, so it's, it's uh, hard for me to keep up on everything, especially since I, re I already read enough books on evolution as it is, and I really enjoy that side of things. I, I, I don't think I could honestly sit down and just read the Bible. I don't know. Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't want to do it again either, and I, and I still read bits and pieces of it, but I certainly wouldn't want to read it straight through ever again. Um, if you're looking for something that's, that's well-written and quick and gives you some information, um, oh, gosh, I've forgotten his name, but uh, it'll come to me in a second. Bart Ehrman has written... I'd recommend misquoting Jesus and also lost Christianities. Both of those look at um, fraud in the Bible and the way the competing views on Christianity fought which ones won out and how they went about suppressing the ideas uh, of, of the competition. So, Okay. 
Thanks a lot for the call, Eric. I'll let you go. Appreciate right, you calling you, in.